could be. Ugh. All right, guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, and I do mean over the top beautiful day. Here in the collapse of global industrial civilization on this unbelievably gorgeous day. I'm sitting here in my sweatshirt here in June. What is it? It is a Sunday evening. Oh, Sunday evening coming down and I think it's June. Good Lord, I have lost track. June 5th, June 6th. 2022 somewhere around there so anyway guys i guess we're gonna push the envelope just a little bit here uh on collapse chronicles uh can't believe i'm doing this we're entering uncharted territory i don't know why any of you care to hear my opinion journalist sam mitchell and uh, journalist, doomer, depressed, collapsitarian, Sam Mitchell's opinion on this uh, Uvalde, Texas shooting, maybe because of my time in Texas. You know, just on the Uvalde shooting and all the other shootings. How many mass shootings? About six a day, I think, we're up to. I, I just heard one of my buddies in the doomosphere, Vegematic, uh, whining about the uh, those those shootings and uh, I don't understand why anybody cares to hear my opinion on these shootings now you know from a collapse from a decline and fall of Western civilization in the American Empire stance obviously guys there's gonna be more of these shootings okay I, uh, uh, you know, it, it doesn't matter what, we all know there's going to be more and more of this shit as uh, this house of cards comes down. So, uh, it, anyway, uh, as much as I have tried to ignore the subject of Uvalde and all the other uh, mass shootings, I've been waiting for... You know, to find somebody to come across my radar uh, that echoes my opinion so it doesn't sound so much like it's coming from me, you know. So anyway, we're going to hear from this fellow named D. Allen Kerr, K-E-R-R, -R, I guess. He is a, uh, he's some kind of journalist who lives in Maine. Never heard of this band before. Right here in Yahoo News, right now. And uh, and so I am just going to read this article, and you can get my opinion, I think, for what it means. Uh, this is the single best article I think I have ever read on Uvalde and every other high school shooting as the uh, this will be a one-off and after this I will hopefully never mention uh, mass shootings particularly in high schools again on this channel but uh, since I could not really find a doomsday sermon that uh, fit the usual standards where, where was this from? Uh, the Portsmouth Herald. I guess Portsmouth is in Maine. I don't know. Or maybe New Hampshire. Anyway, so this fellow, D. Allen Kerr, finally, with a little bit of common sense on how to handle high school shootings as the... Uh, as the general society collapses into mayhem. Take it away, D. Allen Kerr. <clears throat> Want to end school shootings? Let's just arm the kids. You know, my buddy Vegematic was talking about how ridiculous it is, and I agree, arming the teachers 
screw arming the teachers. Let's arm the kids. Put an end to this violence. Okay. Take it away, D. Allen Kerr. When did the National Rifle Association become such a bunch of wimps? During their convention in Texas, just days after the horrific massacre at a nearby elementary school, advocates called for arming teachers and increasing police presence in classrooms. But as they say, go big or go home. Yes. The answer to bring mass shootings in our schools to an end is right there in front of us, but no one wants to say it. So, I will, and uh, Sam Mitchell will give you a double thumbs up. Amen, brother. Okay, the plan. It is time to arm the kids themselves. If the answer to gun violence is more guns, it's really the most logical solution. Now, we must be reasonable about this. We obviously don't want kindergartners running around shooting each other accidentally with their tiny fingers. So, we would have to establish a rational age requirement. Say, maybe 10 years old. I mean, that's the age when kids should be familiar with guns anyway, if they're going to grow up in the USA. Kids could report to their classroom in the morning, recite their Pledge of Allegiance. Could I even recite the Pledge of Allegiance? All right, guys, I honestly have not done this. I, have, I don't think I have recited the Pledge of Allegiance in over 50 years. Let's see how well the brainwashing worked. Uh, can I recite the Pledge of Allegiance? Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands... Oh, no! I'm trying to remember the Pledge of Allegiance. To the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God with, with liberty and justice for all. I think I got it. That, that it has been over 50 years since I have uttered those words. Anyway... Okay, back to uh, D. Allen Kerr, how to end gun violence in schools. Okay, kids could report to their classroom in the morning, recite their pledge of allegiance, and then be issued their gun for the day. Just before the final bell they would turn their weapon back into their teacher to be safely locked away until the following morning. These aren't toys, after all. They are to be solely for defense purposes. Yes. I initially thought Uzi submachine guns for each student made the most sense due to their sheer firepower against any would-be attacker, but figured that might be a little too much firepower for the younger ones to handle. Then I reasoned they should at least have AR-15 semi-automatic rifles, since this seems to be the weapon of choice for some of the more infamous mass shootings we have experienced. But an AR-15, bulky as it is, would not really be that practical for younger students who are also carrying their school books, backpacks, and the like. So, the more logical choice 
would be a simple handgun like maybe a Glock 9mm, which would be more compact and far easier for students to carry between classes. What they would lose in individual capacity would be more than compensated by the accessibility of a 9mm. In other words, imagine some would-be mass shooter bursting into a classroom only to be faced almost instantly by the barrels of at least 15 to 20 handguns. Naturally, the children would have to be trained in the use of their weapons. Target practice on the school shooting range could be incorporated into their regular physical education classes. In fact, we might have to just over, overhaul the entire PE curriculum. I thought that physical education was banned from public schools about 30 years ago. I thought that there is no such thing as physical education. I think this dude must be my age and did not realize he should be able to look at all these little fat tubs of lard running around uh, and understand there are no more PE classes. Do you remember, guys, when, when there used to be like one or two guys or girls in the class who were like the fat boy and the fat girl? You know, I like I still remember David Schwartz and Larry Hemphill. Uh, they, they were the fat boys. And now the fat boys are, are, are just the regular boys. Anyway, so we might as well uh, resurrect the PE curriculum into the gun training curriculum. Dodgeball and badminton should be replaced by significantly more proactive shooter drills and hand-to-hand -hand combat training. I highly advise more hand-to-hand -hand combat training for the collapse of global industrial civilization. Uh, I think after the bullets run out, that hand-to-hand -hand combat will make a uh, comeback here in the very near future. <clears throat> okay. As for kids under the age of 10, who would be too young to carry weapons in school, because that, that would be plain silly, we would probably have to construct watchtowers and high barbed wire fences, like, kind of like they had, like the kind they had in World War II concentration camps. Smaller schools might not have the resources to fund the additional security, but in those situations, we could have older students man the towers, and then maybe we can bring back the Uzis. Think about it. High school kids could volunteer to protect younger students as part of their training or community service. They might even earn credits through a sort of work-study program if they want to work as prison guards or in similar fields after graduating. I think there will be a lot of uh, job opportunities for prison guards over the next few decades. My guess is that prison guards will have more growth opportunity in the near future than any other uh, job available. <clears throat> I know these all sound like bold steps, but it is time for bold action. Honestly, I am surprised I have not heard anyone else even Sam Mitchell at Collapse Chronicles proposed such a brilliant plan yet. Even Texas Senator Ted Cruz, one of the powerhouse intellects of our age, 
has only gone, gone so far as recommending we close more doors and add more security guards at schools. The NRA has been pushing to arm teachers for at least a decade rather than the students who are the ones typically targeted in these attacks. Pretty wimpy approaches if you ask me. How are kids going to look after themselves if we keep coddling them? And maybe arming the populace should be extended to other institutions as well. Just as in the days of yore, when we had a smoking and non-smoking section in restaurants and other venues, maybe we'll have carrying and non-carrying sections in the future. There was a time I would not have foreseen armed parishioners becoming commonplace in places of worship, but as churches have been targeted almost as much as public schools in recent years, it was the inevitable solution. Honestly, what today could be more star-spangled American than the sight of young people marching into Sunday school with a Bible in one hand and a 9 millimeter Glock in the other. And there you go. So who is this fellow? Uh, he sounds like my kind of dude. D. Allen Kerr is a journalist and author who lives in Kittery, Maine. I think I was in Kittery, Maine uh, last summer. Uh, I should have stopped in. If I was still doing interviews, I would bring D. Allen Kerr onto the show because uh, obviously this man understands the collapse of global industrial civilization. And uh, so uh, I, amen to you, brother. And I highly suggest you get out there and. Uh, hand your 10 year old a 9 millimeter Glock and with his peanut butter and jelly sandwich tomorrow. Anyway, let's hope this is the final word that we will need to talk about here at Collapse Chronicles about school shootings, which I assure you are just one uh, One of the many, one of the many ingredients in collapse stew. But anyway, I'm going to get out here and enjoy what's left of this absolutely gorgeous Sunday evening in the collapse. Come see us at Bugs in a Jar Farm. My guys, are you shivering in the cold? We could be in Austin, Texas right now, little dog where it's 99 today, and what is it, 99 in Austin today, 102 the next couple of days, then 105. Had a, uh, a woman from Austin, Texas, living in this tiny house last night, uh, <laughs> getting the hell out of Austin. <coughs> she was in, said, let's see, Ithaca last night then she's heading to albany then she's heading to new england uh to uh figure out what to do with her life anyway enjoy austin texas while you still can jesus bye guys whoa don't want to spill my drink <laughs>